streets at you like a knife. The one to die in these streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. Hey, Doc, I'm trying to get my life right. Cut the skin out, streets at you like a knife. The one to die in these streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. 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 Shalom to y'all. Happy New Year. First and foremost, New Year's Eve. I know they like, what? That's pagan. That's not pagan. <laughs> we have a new year too, and this is it. We are in it. We are in the midst of it, about to happen at sundown tonight. It will be the new year. How do we know? We're going to talk today about uh, the question I had, the question I got, it was last week, was how do we know that we're keeping the Sabbath Right? How do we know that today ain't really Wednesday or Tuesday or something? Like, how do we know that we're really keeping the Sabbath? The thing we have to be able to identify, what's a week? What's a month? What's a year? And if we identify all these things, then we can determine, okay, are we really keeping the Sabbath or not? That's what we can do. Well, I can't think of really nothing better to start with than this. John chapter 8 and verse 32. I was really trying to get all my thoughts together last night. I usually write down about 10 scriptures, but if you look on my paper right now, I got like 40. So <laughs> I'm going to try to hold it together. This is one of my favorite subjects. This is one of the things that really helped me to understand that I'm supposed to be keeping the commandments of God. All right, we're going to start right here. John 8, 32. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Uh -huh. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So the first thing we got to understand is what is the truth? We got to be able to identify what is the truth. What is the truth about a year? What is the truth about a month? What is the truth about a week? So we can identify if we truly are keeping the commandments of God, if we're in the right or in the wrong. Right? Let's go to... Let's go here. Let's go to uh, the book of Esther. The rest of Esther. It should be chapter... 13 and verse 4. Esther chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. This the, is an apocrypha. The rest of Esther. Go ahead. Declare it unto us that in all nations throughout the, the world there was scattered a certain malicious people mm. that had laws contrary to all nations. That's the part right there. What were our laws? That had laws contrary to all nations. Our laws are supposed to be what? The opposite or whatever the world says. So the world says that the new moon is when? When it's dark. The world says that the year is based on what? What is a year? Who can tell me what a year is? I'm asking y'all brothers. Anybody know? What is a year? Somebody give it to me. You got it? Come on, man. What? Is a year. 365 days. See what I'm saying? See? We think a year is 365 days. That's what that's what the that's what they tell us. I'm at anybody else have any idea what a year is? Come on. Nah, you can't answer all our time. Give it to you you want a Zion? Yeah, okay. Uh a year is a revolution around the sun. There you go. See, that's what they tell us in the world. Now, what does God say a year is? Give me the definition of year first so we can... Yeah, I want the regular definition first. We'll get to that. I want the regular definition first. So, they teach us, right, that the world revolves around the sun and based on the position of the earth at the beginning and the end of this cycle around the sun determines a year. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say this a couple times, I'm sure, through this lesson. Time 
is position. It's going to all make sense. Just trust me. Time is position, and position is time. For you uh, nautical people on this side of the room, or on that side of the room, you should definitely understand what I'm saying. Time is position, and position is time. Give it to me. A year, definition uh, A. It says the period of about 365 and a fourth uh, solar days required for one revolution of the earth around the sun. So what they teach us is that the earth revolves around the sun. Now we're going to go to the scriptures and see if that's true. Right? Let's see if the earth revolves around the sun. Let's start at, give me Psalms chapter 93 and verse 1. Does the earth revolve around the sun? Let's see what God said. Psalms 93, verse 1. Psalms chapter 93 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. Mm -hmm. The Lord is clothed with strength. Mm -hmm. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also is established. The world is what? The world also established. Okay. That it cannot be moved. That it won't? That it cannot be moved. So the Bible say that the world is not moving. Alright, let's go to Joshua chapter 10. There's plenty of other scriptures in there. I went to that one, but it's a lot of other scriptures you can go to that tell you that the world is not moving. That it's stationary. So what is moving? Like we just read in Esther, it says there is a certain malicious people whose laws are in opposition to everything that everybody else teaches. You have to understand, if we believe this Bible, Everything that the world teaches us scientifically and historically is going to be the opposite of what they say. Come on. We're going to start one. 10 and verse 12. Joshua chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Then spake Joshua to the Lord. And so the, Joshua was speaking to the Lord. Let's see what he said. And the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. So they out there fighting. Go ahead. And he said in the sight of Israel, son. Stand thou still. Among. He told the son to do what? Son, stand thou still. If the son was the one that was stationary, why wouldn't Joshua say to the Lord, tell the earth to stop rotating around the sun? He said, son, stand still. Go ahead. Upon Gibeon. Uh-huh. And thou moon. And moon. Go ahead. In the valley of Alien. So he told the moon, you stay over there in the valley where you can't be seen. Sun, you stay in position so we have light to fight. I want to 13. And the sun stood still. And the sun did what? And the sun stood still. If the Lord is the Lord and the Bible is accurate and the Lord said that the sun stood still, that would mean what? It's normally what? Moving. But he made it stand still for Israel because we was at war that day. We needed the light. To conquer the Amorites or whatever we was dealing. You finished 13? Mm. Go ahead. And the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. So these elements, the sun and the moon, stayed in position until what? We finished fighting. Then they moved. A little bit more. Go ahead, go ahead. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. So the sun stood still. And hasted not to go down about a whole day. Dang. The sun stood in position. If the if what they is telling us in science class would be accurate, that would mean that this is wrong. It should say the earth stopped spinning on its axis and rotating around the sun in order for us to continue to fight. But it don't say that. Jump to 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. Right now, we're just talking about the position of the elements, right? We're saying that, based on the scriptures, the earth is established. It's not moving. The earth, I mean, I'm sorry, the sun and the moon are the ones that's in movement. Come on. 2 Kings chapter 20, 20 and verse 9. Take King chapter 20 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord. So, King Hezekiah is asking for a sign for the Lord, right? He's talking to uh, Isaiah, right? He said, I, Show me a sign. Go ahead. 
that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. So he wanted to extend, Hezekiah needed his life to be extended a few years because he was in wickedness or whatever. He had to do something. I have to read it. But he had did something. Like, what did he do? He brought the Babylonians in, showed them all. He had like MTV Cribs pretty much. That's what Hezekiah was doing. He had all the people coming in like, look at my stuff. I'm balling. You know what I'm saying? And then the Lord like, I'm going to kill you for that. So this, he, so the Lord forgave him. And he's like, well, show me a sign that the Lord forgave me. That's pretty much what's happening. Go ahead. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees? So he said the shadow. So what, the, what you have to recognize, right, is that even back here, during the time of the kings, we use these elements, the sun and the moon, in order to determine time and position. Read it again. Watch what he said. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees? So he said the shadow, the shadow of the sun. I don't know if y'all did that experiment when y'all was kids where you create like a sundial. You put a plate, you get a plate and you put a pencil in the middle of it and you see the the where the position of the sun is. You can determine what time it is. You never did. I did that when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Read that again. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees? So he said, will the, will the time move ahead 10 degrees? Go ahead. Or go back 10 degrees? Now, what? He said the sun can go backwards 10 degrees. He said, which one do you want? Which sign would be best for you to know that the God is going to do the thing that he said he's going to do for you? He said, should it go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? If the sun goes forward 10 degrees, time moving ahead, would that really be a sign? Not really, because that's kind of normal. That's a normal occurrence. Let's see what Hezekiah said. Come on. And Hezekiah answered. It is a light thing for the shadow to go down he 10 said, degrees. That's normal. I see the sun going forward 10 degrees all the time. Go ahead. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. He said, make time go backwards. Can you do that? Let's see what he said. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord. So he spoke to the Lord. Go ahead. And he brought the shadow 10 degrees he backwards. He brought the sun back 10 degrees. Why wouldn't he say, earth, don't rotate 10 degrees and not move the reverse backwards he said the uh, the sun itself that's what cast the shadow he said the sun moved backwards 10 degrees again the point that i'm making y'all stay with me i'm sorry is that the elements that we see in the sky the sun and the moon and the stars those are the thing that's in movement not the earth all right like we read in esther our laws and what we teach is in a direct opposition to what everybody else said. Go to Romans chapter 3. Watch this. Romans 3 and 1. We're going to jump right back into position this time and time's position. We're going to get right back into that. But give me a second. Romans 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh -huh. What advantage then had the Jews? This is our advantage over the nations. Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Mm -hmm. Much every way chiefly. Because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So the oracles would be like the laws, right? Statutes, commandments, and the elements. Those things are committed to us. You think it's 12 months in a year because just random? No, the Lord loved us. It's 12 months because it's 12 tribes. It's all related to us. This whole planet, everything that it is today is related to you men and women that keep the commandments of God. Keep reading. For what if some did not believe? Mm. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So he said, let the stuff that you read in the Bible be accurate. Where it said that the elements were moving, that's what's accurate. And the things that they say in your science class are inaccurate. <laughs> let God be true. Go ahead. As it is written. As it is written. God is true as it is written. That's what's true. This is what is true. What they teach you about the other way that is rotating, that's untrue. Back to it. All right. Time is position, position is time. Give me 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 26. I want skipper tips. Skipper tips. Somebody pull up skipper tips. You read uh read that scripture I just read. First Kings nine and uh First Kings nine and twenty six. First Kings chapter nine and verse twenty six. Go ahead. And King Solomon made a navy. What of, did King Solomon make? Made a navy. Dang. Go ahead. Of ships 
and Ezion Gaber, mm. which is beside Allah. So, we was nautical back in the day. King Solomon had a navy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all remember that song back in the day. Cash money is an army, but he had a navy. Y'all don't know that. I'm from the South. <laughs> don't nobody know what I'm talking about. Anyway. <laughs> um, right? So King Solomon them, they had a navy. How do you navigate in the ocean? Do anybody know? How do you navigate? Anybody know? Y'all might not know. I don't know. Any of my nautical brothers over here? Zion's a nautical brother. <laughs> Mordecai, you a nautical brother? You been out there in that water? <laughs> no, but I watch TV. This car. You watch TV? <laughs> Come on, how you navigate out there in that water? Um, well, it's a car would use the stars. Use the stars. That's exactly what happens. What? How though? How so? That I don't know. That you don't know. Okay. All right. What you got, Zion? Nautical brothers. You got Sheldon. That's a nautical brother right there. So in accordance with uh, man, he is a compass or gyro compass. That ain't what I'm looking for. Okay. What you guys I am? So Sam, Sam you want something. Let's have your song. By the Northern Star. There, oh, there you go. There you go. That's exactly what happens, right? So go, go to, go to uh, Genesis 1. 14. That's what you was going to say, Zion? No, oh, okay. That's exactly what happens, right? They do something called shooting stars, right? They line up the, the eyes with like the North Star and they can determine how to position themselves and where they at. That's what King uh, Solomon and his Navy did. They think, they think that this stuff that we see out here today is like new. Nah, man. We was navigating, we had a navy, we already had all that stuff before. Come on. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament. God said, let it be what? Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. So the lights in the firmaments of heaven was what? The sun and the moon and the stars. Right? These were lights. Come on. To divide the day from the night. Uh-huh. And let them be for signs mm -hmm. and for seasons and for days and years. So how you determine what a year is, is based off of these lights, right? But should it be the sun or the moon? That's the question we're going to get to. Go ahead. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to give light upon the earth. Mm. And it was so. So this is going into, go ahead, finish. And God made two great lights. He made two, how many, how many lights? Made two great lights. Two great lights. Go ahead. The great light to rule the day. That's the sun. And the lesser light to rule the night. What did he call the, the moon again? And the lesser light to rule the night. You got to understand that the moon, right? When it was fresh out the package. You know what I'm saying? The newest moon ever in Genesis was what again? And the lesser light to rule the night. So again, Bishop, I know Bishop went over this thoroughly. You know what I'm saying? But he tells you right here that the moon was a light, right? Go ahead. Keep going. He made the stars also. He made the stars also. So you got to understand, when you're out there in the middle of that water, right, what happens is some stars are brighter than other stars. The north star is what they use to navigate. Time is positioning. Position is time. I want where it says, hold on. Where it says in chart navigation. So what you have, nautical brothers, some nautical brothers, you have charts, right? Charts. All right, so what we, what you would do is, this is what I did, and again, I was everywhere when I was out there, right? I would go up there and learn how to plot. I know how to plot. I literally did that. I know how to plot position. I literally did that. And it came to my mind as I was learning it, what was being said. It was tripping me out. Watch in chart navigation, start right there. In chart navigation, use the scales on the right or left side to find latitude. Mm -hmm. These scales are broken down into degrees. So they, the, the position, right, is broken down into degrees. Like we read in uh, Kings, it said what? The, that the sun moved back what? 10 degrees. Watch what it's saying, come on. Into degrees. Minutes. What? Degrees and minutes. Time is position. 
Degrees is minutes. Go ahead. And tenths of a minute. And tenths of a minute. Go ahead. Or degrees, minutes, and seconds. Mm. One degree of latitude equals 60 minutes. Dang. One minute of latitude equals 60 seconds. You gotta understand, you gotta understand, when you're looking at these time zones that we live in, we live in a western time zone. That is directly what? Related to your position. Time is position, position is time. Keep going. If your chart shows degrees, minutes, and seconds, change the seconds into tenths of a minute. Mm -hmm. When navigating, it's much easier to work with degrees, mm -hmm. minutes, and tenths. To do this, divide the number of seconds by six. Follow these two examples. That's all I want. So this thing, I, I thought this thing was heavy because it was showing you how, when you go out there, how you plot your position. You have to understand, based on the latitude and the longitude, what position you are, and then you break it down into minutes and seconds. Some of you nautical brothers might know. You, you, you go down there, and then they say, well, what's Zulu time? But y'all say it, you know what I'm saying, and never think about what you actually saying. I know some of that might go up some of y'all, but it's okay. Nautical breaths know what I'm talking about. Um, let's go back. Go back to uh, Second Kings chapter 8 and verse 20. So like we see, King Solomon had a military. He had a navy, right? They use nautical navigation, right? And based on how they wanted to move through the water, they had to triangulate their position. And they did that through the North Star. We were the originators of this stuff. That's the first point that I wanted y'all to understand. Solomon and them was doing this with time and position, Navy stuff, nautical stuff. We was doing all of this before the other nations. So when you, when you, when you look at a, a, a calendar and a, a month, you have to understand the Bible is our foundation, and what that says is what we should do. It's going to be two opposing thoughts, though. You know what I'm saying? You got what the world says you should do, and when that's a year, and then we have to understand what God says a year is. And then we have to still be able to operate in both of those platforms. Go ahead. Second Kings chapter 8 and verse 20. Here it comes. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. So in his days, so this is Joram. Joram the king, right? Go ahead, read that again. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. So, this is the question. What year, because they say these nautical and different things, different uh, advances in history, are based off what Edom has done. But we read right here, read that again. In his days. So this is King Joram. Go ahead. In his days. Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. Edom was under us at this time. We already had a navy. We already understood time and position. Isaiah and Hezekiah was already operating on that plane before Edom was even a nation. They were still under us. But we use them as the measuring stick of when a year and when a month is. When we should be using what God say a year, a month, or a week is. Come on. And made a king over themselves. So Edom made a king over himself. This is the question for you brothers. What year was Greece established? Who can tell me? When was Greece established? Anybody know? Any of you soldiers know? Greece. Nobody know when Greece was put on the, on the planet. Come on, somebody stand up, don't yell out. Are you speaking for you, Alexander? No. It's just Greece established. That's when they was established. 332 BC, sir. Around 330, 334, right? Greece was established after Alexander. Right? That's when they became united and worked together. Right? Alright. When was Rome established? Rome. We got Greece around 333, 334-ish. Rome. When were they established? Anybody know? Nobody know. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's around 753. Rome was established about 753. 
What happens is a lot of times when we read the Bible ourselves, right? We read it in a vacuum. We think that only the history that we're reading here is the only history that ever happened. I saw the history that's happening, but this is our history. Rome's history is not all written in here. But we know that Rome was already established prior to the Greeks. Around 753 is when they was established. Greece took us into captivity first, yes. Rome, we had a league with. Let's get it. Give me that. Go to uh, Second Maccabees or First Maccabees. Give me First Maccabees chapter eight, verse one. First Maccabees chapter eight and verse one. Uh -huh. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. Judas did what? Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. So Rome was already established prior to them dealing with Greece. If you read the history about Hannibal Barca, he hated Rome. So he went and joined in unison with the Greeks. Keep going. That they were mighty and valiant men, mm -hmm. and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. So they had policies in place that if you joined with them, they wouldn't fight against you. Rome already had policies in place prior to Greece even coming on the scene. Come on. And make a league of amity with them, with all that came unto them. Uh -huh. And they, and that they were men of great valor. Uh -huh. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts, which they had done amongst the Galatians. So they already had wars, right? They was fighting against who? The Galatians, which would make reference to who? The Northern Kingdom? Some brothers that was in the Northern Kingdom? The Romans was fighting against them. And then when you read about the Northern Kingdom, like Barker and them, they was against Rome, but they was pro-Greek. Southern Kingdom was against Greek and pro-Rome. That's how the history always is. When you read the history in Kings, it was the same way, right? We was pro-Syrian. Southern Kingdom was pro Syrians, Northern Kingdom was pro Assyria. Right? Am I right? right. That's exactly what happened. Is it, did I say it right though? Yeah. Yeah, because the Syrians went and defeated the Northern Kingdom, right? So we sent them over there. The Southern Kingdom was like, we don't like them, send them over there. Y'all go fight the Northern Kingdom. It's the same thing happening here. We sided with Rome, the Northern Kingdom sided with Greece. Keep going. And how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute. Mm -hmm. And what they had done in the country of Spain mm -hmm. for the winning of the mines of the silver and gold, which is there. Mm -hmm. And that they, and that by their policy and patience, they had conquered all that place, mm -hmm. though it were very far from them. So though this place was far from them, Rome was able still to conquer them through their policies. Rome was already established. Come on. And the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth, mm -hmm. till they had discomfited them and given them a great overthrow, so that the rest they give them tribute every year. Mm -hmm. Besides this, how they had discomfited in battle Philip. There you go. Philip was Alexander's father. The Romans was already established. They was fighting against Philip's father. I mean, against Alexander's father. I'm sorry. Against Alexander's father. Read that again. Besides this, how they had discomfited in battle Philip uh -huh. and Perseus, king of the Sidims, uh -huh. with others that lift up themselves against them mm -hmm. and had overcome them. They had overcame Greece. They were like, Greece, y'all can't mess with us, man. Rome was already established. You got to understand that. A lot of times when we read in history, we think, oh, we read the Greek history, then we read the, we read the Greek captivity, then we read the Roman captivity, and we make it like, well, Rome never existed before they put us in captivity. Now they had been around hundreds of years before that. That's the point I'm trying to make. Last one. Go ahead. How also Antiochus, the great king of Asia, that came against them in battle, having 120 elephants with horsemen and chariots, and a very great army was discomfited by them. So that's about 175 BC, right? Antiochus and them. That's around 175 BC. Keep going. 
and how they took him alive and covenanted that he and such as reigned after him should pay great tribute and give hostages and that which was agreed upon. They said, look, y'all got to give us some money and some hostages or it's curtains for Antiochus. When you read the beginning of First Maccabees, they tell you that Antiochus was a prisoner. Prisoner to Rome. How is he going to be a prisoner to Rome if Rome wasn't already in existence? They was already around before Greece. What does this have to do with a year and a month and a week? It does, I promise you. It's going to all connect. I'm going to bring it all together. All right. Where I want to go next? Where my notes at? Hold on. Let me stick on my notes. Now, we're going to John chapter 11 and verse 47. So we see that Rome was already established. Rome was already established. When did Christ walk the earth? What year was it? Anybody know? Uh, was it 30 AD? Around 30 AD, right? No, no, no. I mean, around. Yeah, he was born around zero, right? No. Around 30? Yeah. Around 30. Okay, around 30. Born around 30. All right, let's go to this. Go to uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. We're going to come right back. You got to understand, prior to Christ living, right, how they would measure time and years would be based off of the king, right? Whatever king was in power, it would be year 15 of King Perseus of something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's how they would measure time based off of the king, right? Give me that, Revelation 19, 16. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh -huh. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. King of Kings. Why would he be called King of Kings? Because now the whole shift of the time scale is shifted to Christ. That's what's happening. When they say King of Kings, they're saying all time is now dictated on the year that Christ came. That's what he's saying. Y'all follow me? So it's no more year 15 of King Andy Alexander or something. You know what I'm saying? It's now we had 2016 after the death of Christ. Because he is significant to everything that's happening for us for his time. Jump back to John chapter uh, 11, 47. I'm sorry. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Uh-huh. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council, uh -huh. and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. Mm -hmm. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans and shall... The who? And the Romans... And the Romans... And the Romans... Go ahead. ...shall come and take away both our place and nation. So, at this time, when Christ is walking the scene, Rome is in charge. We are beneath Rome, right? What is that? Deuteronomy 28? Give me that right quick. Give me 28. I think it's, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The four? I guess so. I don't know. No, 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 no. 28 and. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that one. Start at 43. Watch this now. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee. The stranger which was within thee. When we just read before during the time of Solomon and Joram, who was within us? Who was in subjection to us? Esau. Esau, right? Edom. They was in subjection to us. The stranger that is within us, go ahead. Shall get up above thee very high. Now they going to set the course of time. That's what happened. When they broke off, Right? Rome was established around 753, that time that we was reading about, about Joram. That was around 840-something, right? It was around 8-something. So like 100 years later, they established Rome. Greece broke off from Rome around 330, whatever, and they was fighting and all of that. So the strangers that was within us during the time of King Solomon and them, they got up above us. And now we were reading John eleven forty seven. What does it say? Rome can come take our land away. Well, how does that happen? Because they got up above us according to the curses. Because we weren't keeping the commandments of God. What does this have to do with time? Got a lot to do with time. 
I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to that. Too. Let's go to John 11:47 again. So, the calendar or the year, right, that we use today is the Gregorian calendar. Prior to the Gregorian calendar, what was used and when was it used? Anybody know? Okay. Read John eleven forty seven one more time. Then we're gonna go to the definition of in the Zion. John chapter eleven and verse forty seven. Uh -huh. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council uh -huh. and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. Mm -hmm. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Uh -huh. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So we was under subjection to Rome. Right? We all can agree with that. Right? So the question is, when was the calendar established? Let's go to it. You got me? Calendar. I want where it say in 46. Zondervan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary uh -huh. uh, definition of a year. It says in 46 B.C., a great event over contemporary calendars was made by Julius Caesar, uh -huh. whose calendar year contained 365 and a quarter days. How many? 365 and a quarter days. So Julius Caesar, read that thing again, sir, from the top. At 46 BC. 46 years before even the birth of Christ. You said it's around 30. So we say about 80 years of calendar was already in use. Before Christ was even moving and shaking. The calendar was already in, in motion. The Julian calendar. Not the Gregorian calendar. The Julian calendar was the one that they was using. Read that thing again. In 46 BC, a great event over contemporary calendars was made by Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. Whose calendar year contained 365 and a quarter days. Mm -hmm. It had a discrepancy of 11 minutes, in excess of the solar year. What kind of year? In excess of the solar year. They had a solar year. That is what Edom used to determine what a year was. The sun. Now, we read in Esther at the beginning that our laws are in what? Opposition to everything that the world teaches us, right? So, which would mean that our year would be based off of what? The moon. Exactly. We'll read it. Come on. And so was superseded by the Gregorian calendar. It was succeeded by the Gregorian calendar. So, they shifted from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. So, since they shifted, that means that now we're not keeping the weeks right no more. We don't know everything is off. Right? Because they shifted the calendar. We'll figure that out. Come on. Keep going. In AD 1582. So, so 1,582 years later, they shifted to a different calendar, the Gregorian calendar. But prior to that, when Christ walked the scene, they used the Julian calendar. Okay, we'll stop there. Go back to the Bible. Give me Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. As his custom was, is what Christ did. His customs, go ahead. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. On what day? On the Sabbath day. Hmm. So Christ kept the Sabbath. The calendar was already in place. So he could look at the time and say, well, the calendar say the day of the Sabbath. Therefore, I'm going to go into the synagogue. Go ahead. And stood up for to read. Mm. Jump to Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. So we see calendars in place. Christ can determine, hey, it's the Sabbath day. Let's go. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And the end of the Sabbath. So at the end of the Sabbath, go ahead. As it began to dawn. 
towards the first first day of the week. So if it was the Sabbath, which means seven, right? Then it say, read that again. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. So how many days was in a week in a Julian calendar? It said it was the Sabbath, then it went to the first day of the week. How many days was in a Julian calendar? Anybody got a clue? Go ahead, Diane. Seven. That means they had seven day weeks. In a Julian calendar, they had seven day weeks. Go to. Give me week. Give me definition of week. What is a week? Uh, you can give me both. The question is, how do we know that since they shifted from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, how do we know if we even really keeping the Sabbath holy? How do we know when a year is, when a month is? How do we determine any of this stuff? Come on. Week. Mm -hmm. Any of a series of seven-day cycles. So it's a seven-day cycle. Okay. Used in various calendars. Used in various calendars. They used in the Julian calendar, Gregorian calendar, all type of calendars. They had seven-day weeks. Especially a seven-day cycle beginning on Sunday and ending on Saturday. Dang. That's the regular dictionary. It tells you to start on Sunday and end on Saturday. Now we're going to get it out of the Bible dictionary. Let's see what that says. Zonovan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary, definition of week. Constituted special and significant periodicity units for the chosen people. Who determined the what? No, this was for who? For the chosen people. The chosen people is us. Read that thing again. Constituted special and si significant periodicity units for the chosen people. Uh -huh. The seven-day week is of Semitic origin. The what? The seven-day week is what? The seven-day week is of Semitic origin. That's a Sem That's us. That thing, the seven-day cycle was independent of a year. The seven-day cycle was independent of a month. Keep reading. The seven-day week is of Semitic origin but reckoned from various Reference points. Mm -hmm. The Babylonians and the, ba the who? The Babylonians. The Babylonians and Assyrians uh -huh. bound their weeks to the lunar cycle. So you have to understand if you're saying that your week starts based off of the moon, what is that? A Babylonian custom. We read the scriptures and it say that our laws are supposed to be in opposition to what everybody else says. That's a Babylonian custom to base your weeks off of the moon. So any Israelite camps out there that's doing that, I hope y'all hear me. Read that part one more time. The Babylonians and Assyrians bound their weeks to the lunar cycle. So we never bound our weeks to the lunar cycle. Our weeks were independent of the moon. Or the sun. Go to Genesis 1 again. Start at 14. Start at verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh -huh. And the earth was without form and void. Jump and down to verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And God saw the light, that it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. Uh -huh. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So he called the light day and the darkness night. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the first day of the week, was it determined off of the sun and the moon? Is the sun and moon created yet? No. Let's jump to verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to divide the day from the night. Okay. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So stop. Verse, read verse 3. Verse, just, verse 3. Just stay with me. I, I, I want to make sure we clear this up. Read verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So that light right there, if that's not the sun or the moon, what is that? Can anybody give me a precept and tell me what that is? 
If that's not the sun and the moon, because we just read in verse 14, he created the sun and the moon on the fourth day. So what is this like? He created two suns? Can anybody tell me? Anybody got a precept? What is this like? You guys on me, Eli? Come on, Eli. Uh, would it be Proverbs? I six? said a proverb. Oh, you got scripture? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Proverbs yeah. what? Would it be Proverbs 6.23? I don't know. What does that say? He said no. Okay. Know what that is. Let me see. What that? You got it? Proverbs. I don't think that's right. Proverbs. Oh, no, that ain't it. Nope. That ain't what we look for. Now I see hands. Go to Alicia. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 6. John chapter 1 verse 6. That sounds right. Verse 5. John chapter 1 verse 5. That sounds right too. Let's see what this light was that God created on the first day. No, verse 4. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the whole chapter. <laughs> Which one you want, bro? Yeah, verse 4. John chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh -huh. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Mm. So Christ was the light. That was. That didn't say that. That didn't help you. Oh, okay, go ahead, please. And the light shineth in darkness, uh -huh. and the darkness comprehended it not. Right. So um, that didn't say that either. Start at verse one. Then. In the beginning was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Christ was in the beginning. Keep going. I'm listening. Are you still going? He said, keep going. The same was in the beginning with God. So, Christ was the first thing was the creator. Man, you killing me, man. Anybody got anything else, man? Sheesh, Louise. What is it, verse? Somebody got something. What you got? I got Proverbs 8.22. No. You sure? No. Some of y'all soldiers. What y'all soldiers got, man? Give me some, man. Goodness. John 8 and 12. What that say? He said it's strong. Must be right. Goodness. Yeah, that's right. John 8 and 12. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Dang. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. So there you go. So that light that was created in Genesis 1 and 3 was Christ. Give me Revelation 22 and what's the one I like? 16? Give me Revelation 22 and 16. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Uh -huh. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things. Uh -huh. In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David. He's the root and offspring of David. That's what Christ is. And the bright and morning star. That bright morning star, that first light that was created, that was Christ in Genesis 1 and 3. When you read Genesis 1 and 14, and he said he created light. That's making reference to the sun and the moon and the stars. Why did I go there? I don't know why you went there, but you can go there because we're talking about oppositions. Oh, yes. Yes. Because <laughs> what does the world teach us? What, what, is, what does Christianity teach us? That Christ has always been there. Mm -hmm. He wasn't created. That he, God, and the Holy Spirit, they're all the same person. But the scriptures teach us just the opposite of what they're trying to tell us. That's why I was going there. I was going there to show that the seven-day cycle was independent of the sun and the moon. That's why I was going there. Go back to Genesis 1 14 again. That's why I was going there. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Yes. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to divide the day from the night. Uh -huh. And let them be for signs and for seasons. And for days and years. So you use these things to determine days and years. Go ahead. 
and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to give light upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And it was so. Mm -hmm. And God made two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Again, the lesser light was the moon. Right, go ahead. He made the stars also. Uh -huh. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven mm -hmm. to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good keep going and the evening and the morning were the fourth day so we see that the sun and the moon was not created until the fourth day so the seven day cycle is independent of the month or the year the seven day cycle stands alone go to the second Ezra Chapter 6, 45, yep. Verse 45. Upon the fourth day, thou commandest that the sun should shine. The guy, got, when he created the first sun and the first moon, he created the sun to do what? That the sun should shine. Uh huh. And the moon give her light. What did the moon do on the first day that he created the newest moon ever? What did it do? And the moon give her light. Okay. And the stars should be in order. Like we said before, the stars are in order also, right? The north star is brighter than the rest of the stars. They use that to navigate and calculate position and time. Hmm. Let's go back. Let's go back to Christ. So Christ was keeping the Sabbath. The seven-day cycle was independent of the year or the month. Read Matthew 28, uh, verse 1 again. So we can, no, read Luke 4, 16. No. Give me Mark 15, 42. Mark 15, 42. Mark chapter 15 and verse 42. Uh -huh. And now when the even was come, uh -huh. because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath. So we see the prep day, which we call Friday today, right? They had, again, they had a seven-day cycle. The prep day. Then the Sabbath day, then the first day. Go ahead. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God. Came. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Jump to Mark chapter 6, verse 2. Just to see that they had the prep day, the seventh day, then it went back to the first day to show that it was a seven day cycle. Mark chapter 6 and verse 2. Uh huh. And when the Sabbath day was come, mm -hmm. he began to teach in the synagogue. What did Christ do? He began to teach in the synagogue. So Christ kept the Sabbath day holy, which was the seventh day week, and they used the Julian calendar at that time. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So this is the question you have to ask yourself. If Christ was perfect, right? That's what we say, without sin, right? If Christ was perfect and was out sin, and he was keeping the Sabbath day, on Saturday, the Julian calendar was in effect. If he was keeping it with the Julian calendar in effect on the wrong day, do you think he would have said something? Do you think Christ and the Most High didn't know that the Julian calendar was existing? Do you think that Christ and the Most High didn't know the Gregorian calendar was going to be existing? Was that above their strength? Let's see. Come on. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, mm -hmm. as well as unto thee. But the word preached did not profit them, mm. not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Because we tend to think that the Julian or the Gregorian calendar is beyond the reach of the Most High. Come on. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. So if we truly believe... Because the thing you got to recognize, right, when people give you these questions sometimes, like how you know you're actually keeping the Sabbath day, it ain't no way you can really pull them out of that belief. Like, they gone. Just let them go. All right, well, that's what you believe. Hey, you know what I'm saying? We'll keep the Sabbath on Tuesday if that's what you think it is. Good luck. You know what I'm saying? Come on. 
as I have sworn in my wrath. Mm -hmm. And they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day. On, he spake what? He spake in a certain place of the seventh day mm -hmm. on this wise. Mm -hmm. And God did rest the seventh day. God did rest the seventh day. So we know that Christ was without sin. And he chose to rest on the Sabbath day. The Julian calendar in existence. He could have stopped and said, hey, the Julian calendar, make sure y'all don't observe that. Y'all don't look at that. No, the thing was already in effect. He didn't stop and say, hey, make sure based off of the current situation that y'all switch to this. Let's see. Go ahead. From all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth. That seeing what? Seeing therefore it remaineth. So he said the fact that the Julian calendar was in existence. And what? Read that part again. Seeing therefore it remaineth. The seventh day was still in effect. It was no confusion, even though the Julian calendar was in existence because the seven-day cycle was independent of the year. Keep going. That some must enter therein, mm -hmm. and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. So, the reason why some people won't enter in and they'll ask questions like, well, how you know the Sabbath is really the Sabbath? Well, we know based on the fact that the calendar was in existence when Christ was around and he kept the Sabbath day and he was able to look at the Julian calendar and know that it was there. We can say it was there remains. Based on the fact that we don't just read the Bible and parakeet, we actually look at the historical aspects of it and we can determine, OK, this is why we saying that today is actually the Sabbath day. This is why we saying that this is the new year. This is the new month. We're going to look at the scriptures and then make decisions. Come on. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Here it comes. For if Jesus had given them rest. So when Jesus was walking around and the Julian calendar was in existence and he wanted to tell you and make sure you was keeping the rest of the Sabbath, go ahead. Then would he not afterward. Would he not after he had went into the synagogue and the calendar was in existence, go ahead. Have spoken of another day. He would have said this is wrong. The calendar that y'all see today is wrong. It's off. He would have said it. But he did. Read that part one time. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Go ahead. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. So based on the fact that when Christ walked the earth and the calendar was already in existence, he said the Sabbath remains. Just because they was worshiping the sun and they had their calendar based off of sun worship, just because they had that, it didn't affect the seven day cycle it's independent a week is independent of a year and a month those things are related to the position of the sun and the moon but the seven day cycle is specific to Hebrew heritage to Semitic heritage is what it said keep going for he that is entered into his rest he also had ceased from his own works. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I want. Let's jump to Exodus chapter 31 and verse 12. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 12. Hold on. Let me get that. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Exodus 31 and 12. We have to be able to identify is the reach of the Most High not long enough to get into what calendar and what day of the week it should be. We think he don't know that? All oh, this is a surprise to him. Oh, Gregorian calendar. I'm, I'm confused now. I don't know what to tell y'all. No. Come on. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations mm -hmm. that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doth any work therein, 
that so shall be cut off from amongst his people. Mm -hmm. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So you got to understand how serious the Most High was about the Sabbath. He was serious about that thing. It was so nice, he said it twice. If you violate the Sabbath, I'm going to put you to death. You think he's going to make it confusing now for you to keep it? Come on, man. Keep reading. Verse 16. I think we had, yeah, 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. For how long? Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. The weekly rotation is independent of the year. Throughout your generations, the weekly seven days is independent of a year or a month. Keep going. For a perpetual covenant. That means continuous. Perpetual. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. Here it comes. Forever. How long? Forever. It changed when the Julian calendar came in. Forever. When the Gregorian calendar came, they shifted the days of the week. Forever. They said the seven days is forever. It ain't nothing based on what Rome and Greece and what they've done in power. Regardless, the seven-day rotation will remain forever. Forever, ever. <sighs> Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High uh -huh. and shall wear out the saints. So this is talking about Edom, right? They spoke great words against the Most High. Everything they say is in opposition. Like we read in the Bible, everything they say is in opposition to what the Bible says. That's what it's saying when they say they speak great words against the Most High. Go ahead. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Uh huh. And think to change time. Think to change the time. How did they change the time? Did that mean they changed the seven-day cycle? No. What changed? Who we'll answer it? Go ahead. And laws. Uh -huh. And they shall be given into his hand. That's what happened, right? It was given into their hand to determine the time. And how we determine what time it is. It was given into the other nations. But that it was independent of the seven day cycle. Let's jump to Exodus again. Chapter thirteen, verse four. No, nah, that ain't what I want. It must be twelve. Nope, I want one. Exodus 12 and Yes. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So this is your new year. This month is the beginning of months. This is your new year. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh -huh. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel. Where does it say a bit, man? 13. 13. Go over there. Is that where it's at? 13 and 4? Give me that. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. This day came ye out in the month of Bib. The month of Abib. So that's telling you that the month of Abib was the first month of the year to us. Now why is the Julian calendar 365 days? Right? 12 months. Right? Which is accurate. Why? Why is that happening? Let's jump to Wisdom of Solomon. So we see right here that the Lord said, based off of month. Give me the definition of month. This is the first month to us. Give me the definition of month right quick after Zonda. We're going to get out the Zonda. I got it right here. You looking back there? You want it? It's right here. You want out the Zonda? Yeah. Okay. You can give it to me over there too. You can give me the regular month too. Give me both. Month. 
Definition one, it says, a measure of time corresponding nearly to the period of the moon's revolution. So a month is determined off the moon's changing, right? From dark to light to light to dark, right? That's how you determine a month. And amounting approximately four weeks or 30 days. This amount approximately four weeks or 30 days. This is approximate. Why? Because sometimes the moon shift early. Sometimes the moon shift sooner or later. Let's go back. Give me the Zondervan month. Where you want to start? Uh, from the At beginning? the top, yeah. This is after Zondervan. It says Bible months. Dictionary. Yeah. In effect, is a synonym for moon. So synonym means the same thing, right? Month is a synonym for moon. Ancient people seemingly universally worship the moon uh -huh. and measure time by it. What do we do with the moon? And measure time by it. We measured our months. We can determine our months of it. We know that the sun is how we determine minutes and seconds and hours. Go ahead. Probably because of its ink because of its conspicuousness and regular occurrence. What does conspicuousness mean? It's able it's clearly able to be seen. Sorry. It's clearly able to be seen. That's what conspicuousness means. Because it was clearly able to be seen. You could clearly identify it and say, oh, it's this week, it's this day of the week. Go ahead. The Arabic word for moon means the measure. Uh-huh. And the Egyptian moon god, Thoth, was the god of measure. Mm -hmm. Even apostate Jews at times worshipped the moon along with other heavenly bodies. Uh -huh. Here we go. Moon was synonymous with month. Mm -hmm. In common parlance in Moses' day. Later, when the responsibility of making the calendar was... Dang, so Moses never had a calendar all the way back there. <laughs> But we used what to determine how many months it was? The moon. They use the sun. We're going to see it. Give me Wisdom of Solomon. All right, come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, and verse 1. Okay. Nevertheless, thy saints had a very great light, whose voice they hearing and not seeing their shape, because they also had not suffered the same things they counted them happy. So... This is going to us coming out of the land of Egypt, right? Go ahead. But for that, they did not hurt them now, of whom they had been wrong before. Mm. They thanked them and besought them pardon. So the other nations that was following us, we was thanking them and asking God to pardon these nations that was following us. The Edomites that we read about in uh, First Kings where it said that they was under our control. We asked the Lord to pardon them. Go ahead. For that they had been enemies. They had been our enemies. Go ahead. Instead whereof thou gavest them a burning pillar of fire. What did the Lord give them instead of giving them pardon? Go ahead. Instead whereof thou gavest them a burning pillar of fire. He gave them, a, he gave them the sun to worship. Come on. Both to be a guide of the unknown journey. What do they use the sun for? Both to be a guide. That's their guide. That's how they determine when a year is. They use the sun. But we as Israelites should be in opposition of that. That's what we read in Esther. Keep going. Of the unknown journey and a harmless sun to entertain them honorably. There you go. They use the sun to determine when they do things. Go back to year in the Zion. Nah, I didn't write that down. Did you want that? Yeah, I know. That's exactly what you're saying. Oh, go ahead. Surah 43, verse 7. Surah chapter 43, and verse 7. Mm -hmm. From the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. Right, so the moon is a sign. That's how we tell time, right? Read. The month is called after her name. So going into what the office is bringing out, our forefathers have always used the moon to determine when the months begin mm -hmm. in our times for everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas the heathen use the sun. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to prove that. 
Let's go to year. Back in the Zondervan again. We'll start up at start at 46 again. We're gonna say in 46. Years in 46 BC, a great advance over contemporary calendars was made by Julius Caesar. So they thought they made a great advance. Even though we already have been having calendars in 12 months. Go ahead. Whose calendar year contained 365 and a quarter days. Mm -hmm. And had a discrepancy of 11 minutes. And it was wrong. It was wrong 11 minutes, what they determined. 11 minutes wrong from what is the question. We don't, it's going to tell you. Come on. In excess of the solar year. Mm, in excess of the solar year. So how do you think they determine what a solar year is? The, but the sun is solar. But I'm saying based on what, though? How do they determine it? We're going to see it. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get it. And so was superseded by the Gregorian calendar in 1582 AD, mm -hmm. which was adopted by England in 1752. It has the infinitesimal error of gaining one day in 3,325 years. Mm -hmm. Josephus, Here we go, Josephus, said that Moses ordered that the year of holy days and religious festivals begin with Nisan. That's also a bib, right? But during the Babylonian time, it was called Nisan. It's the same month. Go ahead. The month in which the exodus transpired. See that right there? Go ahead. It's the same time. But that he retained the old order of year. So he retained. So Josephus, he understood the old order of how a year should go, like we understand today. And he understood the new order of how the year should go. The same way we do today, right? When I say the old order, we're saying based on what God's laws say and based on what the world says. We have to understand both platforms in order to know how to move in this society. That's what Josephus, he had the same problem. He couldn't keep none of the high holy days if he was basing it off of their year. So he had to understand how to keep the high holy days based on what God said. And then whatever the world was doing as far as taxes or fiscal year or whatever it was. He had to understand how their year worked because they was under subjection to Rome. Keep going. For buying and selling. See, he, could, he used the old way, the old calendar, Moses' calendar, in order to determine when the high holy days was, when it was okay to buy and sell. Go ahead. And secular affairs. Mm, so in secular affairs, he said, well, he understood, he had to understand the Romans' calendar in order to know when he had to pay his taxes. Go ahead. This observation has been confirmed by critical study and subsequent Jewish custom of keeping both a sacred and a civil year. That's what we're doing today. We know that the new year is starting tonight at sundown. But the world says that the new year started when? In January. But if we're not aware of both, if we're not aware of when this world, when the secular calendar is in play, if we're not aware of that, you don't pay your taxes on time, see what happens. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be aware of both. Go ahead. Feast and fast were intricately woven into the lunar solar system. What did we use? Intricately woven into the lunar solar sacred year. That's what we use. The lunar year, which would be based off the new moon. That's how we determine what a year was. But Julian calendar was based off the solar year. The thing you have to understand is that is of no effect on a seven-day cycle. Those things are independent of each other. Keep going. Three great historic feasts were instituted by Moses. Uh -huh. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's Passover. That's coming up. The Feast of Harvest. That's Pentecost. And the Feast of Ingathering. That's the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. Right? Jump down to where it say beginning. Beginning in the month Nisan or Abib, the sacred holidays of feast and fast came in the following order. Uh -huh. On the 14th of Nisan, the first month, the Passover was observed in preparation for the following week's festival. And in where you at? Where you at? Where you at? In the middle Let's of say beginning in the month. I, yeah, I missed something. The Read that again. Uh, the beginning in the month of Nisan. Beginning in the month, Nisan, or Abib. So it's telling you that that's the Babylonian word, 
And then that was the Egyptian word, I think. Oh, no, Abib, that was our word. Abib was ours, right? Nisan was the Babylonian term. Go ahead. The sacred holidays of feast and fast came in the following order. So the sacred holidays. So when it says sacred, it's making reference to what? Based off the moon, we determined 14 days after the new moon that it was the Passover. That's what it's saying. Uh, keep going. On the 14th of Nisan, the first month, the Passover was observed in preparation. I don't want all that. Jump down to Christian Easter. Christian Easter, fulfilling the Passover, mm. is reckoned on solar lunar cycles. So we know that <laughs> Easter ain't got nothing to do with the Bible, right? I'm going to read this right quick. This out the vines. Matter of fact, you read it, JDL. Hand this to JDL for me. Easter. Easter. Mistrans Pascha, it's mistranslated Easter in Acts 12 and 4. Mm -hmm. KJV denotes the Passover. The phrase after the Passover signifies after the whole festival was at an end. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. The read that part again? The term Easter is not of Christian origin. Okay. It is another form of Astarte, uh -huh. one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the Queen of Heaven. Here it comes. The festival of Pasch, held by Christians in post-apostolic apostolic times, was a co continuation of the Jewish feast, mm -hmm. but was not instituted by Christ. Christ never instituted the Easter. He never said, oh, let's celebrate Easter. He never said that. Go ahead. Nor was it connected with Lent. Mm -hmm. From this posh, the f the pagan festival. The what? The pagan festival. It tell you right here, Easter was a pagan festival. Go ahead. Of Easter was quite distinct and was introduced into the apostate Western religion mm. as part of the attempt to adapt pagan festivals to Christianity. That's why they created Easter. It was part of an attempt to adapt pagan festivals into Easter. What does that have to do with a calendar or a year? Everything. Got everything to do with a calendar or a year. We're going to get back to it. Come on. Go back to that Zonderburn one more time. Start from Christian? Yep. Christian Easter, fulfilling the Passover, is reckoned on solar lunar cycles. They determine they feast days or they pagan days based off of what? The solar cycle. That's how they determine when Easter is. Read it again. Christian Easter, fulfilling the Passover is reckoned on solar lunar cycles uh -huh. coming on the first full moon on or after the vernal equinox. That's what they determined it off. The vernal equinox. The vernal equinox. Go back to that, uh, go to the wiki. Which one? Uh, I want, let's start with Gregorian. Calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about what the Gregorian calendar is. Go ahead. It's because that's the calendar that we have in play today, right? So we see that Christ had the Julian calendar, right? It was in existence for about 80 years when he was walking, and we got the Gregorian calendar today. Go ahead. The Gregorian calendar. It's internationally the most widely used civil calendar. Mm -hmm. It is named after Pope Gregory the Thirteenth, mm -hmm. who introduced it in October 1582. Okay, jump down to yeah, just jump down to the next part. It was a refinement to the Julian calendar. It was a refinement to the Julian calendar. They said, "Hey, remember, like we read before, it, said it was like 11 minutes off, right? Go ahead." Involving an approximately 0.002% correction in the length of the calendar year. Uh -huh. The motivation for the reform was to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes and solace. What was solstices. the purpose of them putting that calendar in effect? The motivation for the reform was to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes. To the equinoxes, which we just determined was what? Easter. The equinox is Easter. Go ahead. And solstice. Solstice is what? Christmas. So they changed the calendar so they can line it up with Christmas and Easter. 
That's why the Gregorian calendar was put in effect. Just go back and then roll down to weeks. It should be like... There you go. Start time. In conjunction with the system of months, there is a system of weeks. Mm -hmm. A physical or electronic calendar provides conversion from a given date to the weekday. Mm -hmm. and shows multiple dates for a given weekday and month. Calculating the day of the week is not very simple because of the irregularities in the Gregorian system. Mm -hmm. When the Gregorian calendar was adopted by each country, the weekly cycle continued uninterrupted. Read that part again. What happened with the weekly cycle? The weekly cycle continued uninterrupted. So the day that Christ kept the Sabbath day was not now shifted when they shifted to the Gregorian calendar. It said it continued uninterrupted. Just because they put the new calendar in place, they didn't say, oh, now it's, it went from like Tuesday to Friday. It continued uninterrupted. Watch, keep going. For example, in the case of the few countries that adopted the reformed calendar on the date proposed by Gregory the 13th for the calendar's adoption, uh -huh. Friday, uh, the, October 15th, 1582, the preceding date was Thursday, October 4th. What happened? They put 10 days in place to correct the 11-minute offshoot that was happening with their equinox and their solstice, which was to celebrate Easter and Christmas, right? They, they, they just went from Thursday to Friday, even though they added 10 days to correct the offshoot. Because by the time that the Julian calendar came into play in 1582, there was 11 days off of the equinox. So they had to add 10 days to get back on schedule so they could worship the sun on the right day that they was worshiping. But did the seven days switch? Give me that calendar. So you can see what happened. So we can see the shift. Yes, that's it. Blow it up big. Make it a little bigger if you can. So y'all see the Thursday, October 4th. When they put the Gregorian calendar into play, it just went from Thursday to Friday. They didn't shift the weekly cycle now. They just added 10 days to line it up so they could worship on Easter, their pagan Easter holidays, so they could worship on Christmas. That's all they did. They never shifted the weekly cycle. That is independent of the moon and the year. Come on, let's go back. Daniel 7, 25 again. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Okay. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And think to change times and laws. So the time was shifted, like we just see. So they can line it up with the days that they want to worship the sun on. That's all that happened. Give me that picture of time zones. The map. Yeah, the map. And let's go to Galatians 4 and 26. So, we understand, right? I hope you understand, right? Months are determined by the moon and the cycle of that, right? The current system that we live on today, the Gregorian calendar, determine a year based off of the sun, right? And the equinox and solstice, weeks were never interrupted from the time of Christ up until today. They still continue on the same cycle. Now, this was important to me. Because it said, read that Daniel uh, 725 again. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Uh-huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Okay. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Okay. And think to change times and laws. So when you say think to change times and laws, I'm telling you that time is directly relative to position. So if you look at zero, right, what you have on zero is what you call, uh, that's the beginning of time to them, right, and time zones. 
So at zero, what's in the middle? Smack dab in the middle of it's what? The UK. So they base all time off the position of the UK. Give me Galatians 4 and 26. Which would be in opposition. You see the zero? Over a little bit to the right. There you go. Scroll down that zero. See that? UK is snap dab in the middle of that. So they base all time based off the position of the UK. Which is in opposition of what the Bible say. Let's see. Give me Galatians 4.26. Because all time should be based off the position of what? Let's see. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. Uh -huh. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Uh -huh. Which is the mother of us all. So the mother or the determining factor of where time and position should start should be based off what the Bible says. Which would be Jerusalem. So we should be over like three degrees. According to God's word, to set up proper time zones, top proper years, proper months, it would all shift. Go back to uh, the rest of Esther. 13. Yes, sir. That's crazy because that just goes to show you, <laughs> no matter what Esau tries to do, man, you cannot disrupt us keeping the commandments. You can't. The Most High set it up. He so set it up that way. Have to keep the All we got to do is ask the question. The Most High make it clear for us. Man, that's crazy. Come on. Start it for again. Esther chapter 13 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Be clear unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people mm -hmm. that had laws contrary to all nations. Our laws are supposed to be contrary. If the if the if the world says that the new moon is dark. That means that we should say what? The new moon is light. If the world says that the new year starts at the uh, based off the position of the sun, we should say what? It's based off the moon. If we truly are keeping the commandments of God, everything we do and believe should be in opposition of what the world says. Come on. And continually despise the commandments of kings. Mm -hmm. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. There we go. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone. We have to understand that us alone on this planet. Go ahead. It's continually. In continually forever. Come on. In opposition unto all men. That's what we're supposed to be. Continually in opposition. To everything that the world says is a is a year, is a month, is a, a whatever. We're supposed to be in opposition, even in days. Right? They say the day started at, at, at the rising of the sun. We say it started when? At the moon. We got to be in opposition on everything. That's how the Lord set it up. The scripture say was that Sarah. Good is set against evil. We're supposed to be continuously set against them in everything that we do, even in the measure of time. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org